I'm joined by Greg Labanov, uh, and we're going to be talking about Wander Song. Uh, so thanks, Greg, for taking some time to uh, talk with us. Sure thing. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Um, so if somebody is watching this and they're unfortunate enough to have not run into Wander Song yet, why don't you give them a little bit of a pitch for the game? What is it? Why should they be excited? Uh, Wander Song is a musical adventure game where you play as a bard, uh, and you basically use singing to help help people and solve puzzles and save the world. Um, you kind of play as like a walking musical instrument, and you get to make up music as you go. Different things in the world respond to your music in different ways, and it's just a goofy, stupid, silly, fun, happy game. Perfect. Yeah. That's a great. <laughs> that's a great pitch for it. Um, <laughs> the the first thing when when I reached out to you and was like, okay, you know, hopefully we can talk about Wonder Song before it comes out. It's coming out on the twenty seventh, so if, we'll have links in the description below to the Steam page and all that junk if people want to check it out. Um, why the focus on music, I guess, is the first thing. And why the focus on, on bards? I have to imagine there's a story behind that. Uh, mm, I mean, I, I love bards. I think that they're, like... like I, I Ever since I found out that they existed in, like, this game Dungeons & Dragons, I just <laughs> think they're really funny because, yeah, they're just, like, the the silly ones that just play music and somehow they get to be, like, with the heroes. And I just think that's that's great. Um, so I've always been a big fan. And I love, I love music as well. Um... This game kind of came from a weird place. Like, um, I, I, I before making this game, like I, I did a really long bike trip. I lived with my bicycle for five months. I went across America. That was a really cool, life changing experience. I wanted to make a game that was kind of about that. Um, but yeah, that experience and uh, mm -hmm. the like. I, I, after doing a lot of like kind of processing on it, like this is kind of the game actually I ended up making. Um, not really about biking, but kind of about the spirit of that trip and that mm -hmm. kind of journey and the optimistic uh i don't know feeling that i had coming from it so um music is just something that i love and i really felt like uh that it really was about like that joy and that energy of like singing and like just like sp like you know like spreading that like positive energy that like music to me really can embody and that was kind of like where i came from coming into this game yeah awesome that's a that's a really cool place for that to come from um mm. now as people will see, we've got footage in the background. Like, it's very obvious music is kind of like the central mechanic of Wander Song. But one mm. of the things in, in playing through the game and, and getting into it that kind of stuck out to me, that really spoke to me, was there's also this very clear bent on not taking the violent option, so to speak. Um, and your, your character, this bard, will even you know, emphatically say, no, let's not do that, um, as himself, you know, kind of pushing you to to work things out in a peaceful way. And I've seen you talk on, on Twitter about some people saying, oh, well, you know, this is like music as a weapon or the, the co musical <laughs> combat kind of aspect. So I also wanted to kind of pick your brain about um, developing a, co a mechanic uh, that plays into that nonviolence and, and how you balance that. Because it's it's something we've talked with other devs in our interview series about, and it that that kind of interaction of combat of of conflict is something that's very easy to do in gaming. It's 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 a crutch. I've had other developers talk about it. So mm -hmm. why did you choose to not go that direction, and and what were some of the maybe the hurdles that you ran into in, in executing that idea? Um, I mean, well, so obviously personally, you know, I'm 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 a big believer in, in nonviolence and nonviolent solutions to mm -hmm. to, to problems. Um, so, you know, I, I, I was trying to, I guess, I guess, you know, to me it was important to try to find a way to like kind of express that with this game. And it really just felt like, um, you know, the, the, the starting point for the game was with the music stuff. Mm -hmm. And once that was nailed down, I just really felt like I had an opportunity there to, you know, just see how far I could go with that and try to make the game about, about that. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, because I was making a game that was like an adventure and, um, there's kind of this, this larger theme that talks about like, the bard's relationship to like what a hero is supposed to be. Mm. It felt like there was a conversation there that was going on about about violence and how the bard's means were different than what other people's are. And I just thought that was interesting, and I wanted to kind of like push into that. Um, now with the end result, you know, I'm I am I am really happy with with that that choice and that message. And I kind of want to like keep trying to find ways to to talk about that with games because yeah, like it, it is really easy to make uh, games where you solve your problems with with just like violence. Mm. Um, <clears throat> there definitely were situations where, like, uh, making this game, you know, just 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 by the unfolding of the story, like sometimes the the bard, well, it, it kind of, it kind of tricks you because it's like mm -hmm. you know, oh, like they're in a situation where like it really feels like they've got to like fight something, 
you know, and they can't. So it's like, it felt, sometimes it would feel like a block, but then almost always like, you know, having that as a constraint kind of helped me think really creatively and find graceful solutions, you know, just, just kind of like leaning into that, like, mm. okay, yeah, this is like a conflict for them. Like they, they have to solve this problem and they don't have these means. So like, what do they do? And that's what the game kind of becomes and becomes about. Mm. So, you know, I, I, yeah, I kind of tried to use, use that, <laughs> um, to, you know, just to help, help, uh, inspire. Yeah. Yeah. I think that comes across perfectly in the game. You know, there's these mm. situations that, um, I kind of feel like at some points you were almost poking fun at, at classic adventure situations, you know, troll on the bridge that you got to fight and how do you get around that, that kind of stuff. But, so it's, it's an interesting exploration of the, the nonviolent path. Um, yeah. I think like in a, in a bigger way, it, it's that, you know, um, there's, there's, there's so much stuff. I mean, like there's so many like ideas that are just embedded and, and, you know, like our, the storytelling that we do these days, but you know, one thing that I really like that happens in basically every like popular film and game that kind of bothers me is this idea that like the person who wins the fight and at the end of the story is the one who's like the good one, you mm -hmm. know, and it's just it's just kind of like validating like, you know, strength is how you prove that you're good. And if you're not strong, then you're, you're not good. And I just think that that's like an, a, an obviously false idea, like mm -hmm. in practice in the real world. But that's just not how you know, we, we solve our, our problems. And so and in that sense, too, you know, I just, yeah, I felt it was like an, almost important, like, like to, to really kind of put that across to, to, to give people an example of a character that, like, has a different kind of strength and that can solve the problems in a different kind of way. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Uh, no, I think that came through. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about and, and find out how it kind of developed um, was the game's art style. It's a very colorful, kind of this kind of paper cutout uh, art style. Um, was that always what the game looked like or, or how did that art style evolve? Um, there was some, like very early on, there was some kind of exploration of different ideas. Like there's, I have like a sprite sheet of just like pixel version of, of the bard, um, mm. that I was, when I was thinking of making like a pixel art kind of thing, so it was easy. Um, but pretty much once I, once I really kind of thought through, kind of thought through what I wanted the game to feel like, um, I have like a really early like sketch I did like just like a it's very crappy looking but like and I, my kind of idea for the game would look like that was inspired by like uh, Epic Yarn the Kirby mm. game on TV. so like once I kind of had that idea it just was so it just seems so obvious that that's what I had to do because <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it, fit, it fits the feeling of the game so much um, especially really because like yeah the the game is um it's so much about like expression and individuality and kind of like the different personalities that you you, you see you know throughout the, the world and inside this game and you know to have like um you know to, to use art that had like lots of like repetition you know like tiles or or like was on a grid just wouldn't have wouldn't have felt right you know mm, yeah. so I, I really wanted it to feel just like lively and organic and, and handmade uh, and so yeah it just uh, yeah it just felt like there was no nothing would have worked nearly as well mm. so <laughs> um last thing i wanted to kind of ask about uh, kind of combines the two things we are talking about, like this mechanic of singing and where you're coming from that, and then the art style, and that's the the main mechanic of this wheel, this mm. kind of one part color, one part music wheel that you use not only to solve puzzles but to interact with people. Um, it, it's, it's everywhere in the game. Um, I'm wondering if that was something that you started with, is having this kind of radial menu as the main mechanic. Yeah, that was actually the very, very, very first thing before there was a character in the game. Like my, my kind of like the, the kind of starting thought. You know, I had a lot. Of, I had a lot of things that I was thinking about. You know, in, in in a big picture way. But when when it came to like things that that turned into this game, hmm. um, it started with just the idea of like, oh, you know, what if I, what, what, how, how can I make a game controller into like a musical instrument? Hmm. Just like like what's what would be the coolest way to do that? And I, I thought about mapping the right stick to. Uh, you know, like a, a wheel like that. Mm -hmm. So I have just like just like a gray screen and like a circle wheel and you can just like move the stick around and it makes little notes. Mm -hmm. And I just thought that was the funnest thing. <laughs> and it just felt so easy to make up little songs with it. And I just started like that's from that I just started having all these ideas. I was like, wait, like, you know, all these other like things I want to make a game about, like we could kind of like feed into this, you know, like what other than they had this kind of character idea and yeah, so that that was kind of like like that's like the ground zero, like the seed that became everything else was that that rainbow wheel musical thing. Awesome. Yeah. That's cool. Um, so moving from talking about kind of the game's design philosophy to mm -hmm. your background, um, tell us the story. What got Greg into making indie games? Uh, Greg has always loved making dumb things. Uh, <laughs> I do like when I was when I was very, very small, I would write like little storybooks and draw comics. I actually made like little board games and card games with markers and scissors and stuff. Mm. Um, so I always really just liked 
making stuff up. I really liked uh, telling stories and making up stories. Um, and so I think well, when I was like around, like in, in like my early teens, um, I wanted to make, uh, I was looking at just how to make like a video game version of like some of my comics and, and stuff mm. like that. That's how I found um, Game Maker, which is the software that I still use today. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, I just kind of like realized that games are way more fun than <laughs> comics. Like they were just way cooler. So, I mean, and obviously I, I love games too, right? But so, uh, yeah, I just started making like kind of these like little like story games. Um, mm. Some of them, like some of my earliest ones are still on my, on my website. You can see just like like pixel art games that I was doing. They were just kind of like fun little story things. Um, in 2012, I released, uh, like I, wor I, worked, I worked for like two or three years on a big JRPG that I released in 2012. Um, and that one, it didn't, it was like, I, it, was, it was something I put a lot of time into that didn't mm -hmm. do like, as well as I, like this is like that was the year like indie game the movie came out and stuff. Right. So I had a lot Lynch of ideas. Lynch year, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, and you know I think I think a lot of people had a similar experience. I had all these big ideas like oh like I could be a successful game designer actually like, hmm. uh, and I, I wasn't I just I, I wasn't, <laughs> um, and but it, it kind of opened my eyes, you know, to the idea that there actually was so much for me to learn. Like hmm. you know I, I made this game and it was like it wasn't successful in the way I wanted it to be, and I was starting to see how like. I had failed in, in certain ways. Like, I, just, I didn't make a game that was as good as I thought, basically, mm. right? So I spent a few years working on, um, like, I made I made a lot of kind of more game designery games. You mm. know, I tried to focus less on story and more on just like game, like, like really like heart of game design stuff. I made like a puzzle game and I made like a card game roguelike and all kinds of just like little like like very like game design experiments. And then at the end of that, like, Wander Song was kind of like after a few years coming back to my kind of original dream of like you know how do i tell a story in a game but now using this kind of like language and, and design experience that i had to kind of marry that with the storytelling stuff um to make something that i i i feel like really kind of like works really cohesively with all those different parts and and does and does tell a story perfect yeah and uh <laughs> you mentioned you 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 loved games what were some of the inspirational games for you what were some of the games that kind of stick out in your head that were those moments where you played it and it's like oh i want to make these uh Cat the, the one the one game that like um like made me realize that i wanted to make games was earthbound mm. which i played when i was like 12 like i played like an emulator on, on my laptop or something but like yeah that game just really really spoke to me i love the personality of it um and i just like really felt like it, it was it's one of those things where it's it's so it has such a personality it feels so personal uh that like I could I could see like a person in it, you know. I could mm. really feel like oh, so, like like a hum a human made this, like somebody made this, like I could make this, you know. And that that was like a really big thing for me. Um, but yeah, like growing up, like I loved Pokemon. I played like way too much of that. <laughs> Smash Bros, Zelda. I, like, I was basically just a Nintendo fanboy growing up. I only had Nintendo consoles until I was in high school or something. Yeah. Mm. So all all that kind of stuff. Um, and Wind Waker is probably the other one I would like name like specifically was like like a really big title for me that really kind of inspired me to think about what kind of games I wanted to make and stories I wanted to tell just because I, I love the world of that game and the art and the characters so much. Mm. Yeah, great, great ones to pull inspiration from. Uh, <laughs> so to to kind of wrap this this discussion up, we always ask <laughs> indie developers that we talk to uh, what other indie games out there have have captured their attention recently either that have come out or are in development, uh, what are you looking forward to? Um, ooh, what am I looking forward to? Uh, um, I've seen a game that I think is still untitled. It's being made by someone named Phil Crefo, uh, and he's been posting stuff on Twitter. He made a game called Fossil Echo previously, uh, and his game, it's kind of, it takes place on an island, and you play as, like, a girl who can, um, like, mind control different uh, objects. And she also has a ukulele that she can play anytime. <laughs> so I'm curious about that too. There's basically like there's a lot of kind of like um, fun like musical expression games that I'm I'm seeing emerging now that I'm mm -hmm. I'm really excited about because you know I hadn't seen anything like that before making Wander Song and now that I made it it just seemed so like I want to say like obvious it was just mm -hmm. like oh my god like there's so much here and like this feels like a whole world to explore and like I'm just one person you know so All I'm right. excited I'm really excited to see other people kind of like take an idea like that and, and see what what they do with it so those are two games that i'm i'm really excited for uh in that sense uh man i feel like there's like a ton oh well the new, new super smash brothers that's not indie <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it's one to be excited for i mean come it on. is it new is smash. exciting um 
Oh, and, okay, there's one... Oh, my friend Andrew Brophy is making a game called Knuckle Sandwich. Ooh. That is actually one I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to. It's like an RPG that looks like Earthbound, but isn't inspired by Earthbound in any way. Uh, and uh, this other game called... Uh, I think it's called Burrito Galaxy or something? I can't remember. <laughs> it's being made by um, someone named... Well, the person that I know on the team is named, like, Mushba. If you follow yeah. them on Twitter, they do, like, really, like weird kind of like uh, vaporwave like fashion design stuff mm -hmm. they're like a really interesting personality and they've been working for many years on this like narrative first person game called i think it's i think it's burrito galaxy uh and i don't know what it's about but it just looks <laughs> whack and fun as hell so awesome. those are <laughs> those are games that i'm excited about those are some great ones for us to follow up with well great thank you for taking some time to talk to us a little bit about the design philosophy behind wander song and and your background so as we said, Wander Song is coming out on the 27th. We'll have links below. Uh, and again, thank you for talking with us, and please keep us in the loop. Sure. Yeah, thank you very much.